Hi, I'm Fred Brunges, owner of Daystar Filters. I'm going to show you how to turn this train wreck of a solar image into this using flat fields. But first, let's talk about what often goes wrong in solar imaging. Dust spots can show up on the camera sensor, filter, UVIR cut filter, focal reducer, or anywhere in the rear part of your setup. These dark spots are best avoided by keeping your equipment sealed tight as much as possible, but a flat field can work very well to hide them. Another common problem is vignetting, where the aperture of the filter or an adapter is smaller than your camera. Short of getting a larger aperture solar filter, flat fielding can reduce the impact. Because Daystar uses naturally grown mica crystals, some variation in brightness across the field of view is possible. But again, a flat field does wonders to level these out and make even entry-level filters perform like a better research-grade PE filter costing over $10,000. All solar filters have some degree of non-uniformity and can benefit from a flat field. And that's why all professional observatories worldwide capture flats as a standard part of operations. Another problem we sometimes see are hot spots caused by internal reflections of poorly coated lenses, non-black internal components, lack of baffling, or light leaks. Swapping out components or covering the rig in a dark cloth can help, as can flat fields. If you get a regular series of lines in your images, these are Newton's rings or interference patterns. Flat fields won't fix this. Something is too parallel in your setup and you'll need between two and five degrees of tilt at your camera to disrupt the effect. Our interference eliminator is designed to correct this problem. Be wary of other tilt solutions that can't tilt far enough to actually work. So flat fields, they seem like they're complicated and hard and a pain in the rear, but trust me, they're worth it if you want those magazine quality images. What we do is capture what's called a flat image with a uniformly illuminated blurred image of the sun. Then a normal pretty image is taken. That good image is then divided by your flat to make a smooth and even picture. Bright areas in the flat field will divide the image down more and dark areas divide it less to flatten everything out. You'll need to capture a new flat every time something in your optical train moves or gets reassembled because even tiny changes in angle will show up. There are three popular ways to capture a flat, the defocus blur, the bag, or the boogie. So pick one, but don't combine these methods. The first method is to point your telescope at the center of the sun and defocus the image a whole bunch till everything blurs out completely and then some. Use the lowest gain setting on your camera and set the exposure time so that you aren't white clipping any portion of the image. I like to put the right side of the histogram at about the 90% level. I also recommend averaging together a bunch of frames to reduce noise. If you've done a good job, your flat field might look like this. We've got the dust spots, the non-uniformity, the vignetted corners. If they're in this image, they can be corrected. The second method is to average together a whole bunch of frames while you slew around near the center of the sun. This is easiest with a high power view. Be careful not to get near the edge where limb darkening will ruin this technique. Oops, let's try this again. Try to never stop as you move around. Avoid any big, bright, active regions if possible. Sometimes it can help to turn down the capture frame rate. The third method is to put a translucent bag or plastic sheet over the front of your telescope. We sell a robust version of this called the flat cap that works with full disk or narrow field imaging. The bag method works by blurring the incoming light and spreading it around. For full disk imaging, you need a very severe blur, which translates to a completely frosted material. If you can see sharp details when looking through your bag, it won't work for full disk imaging. These large blurs mean you'll need to increase your exposure times a lot. In the case of our flat cap, exposure time must be longer by a factor of about 100 to compensate. Because of these long exposures, you'll need to start by doing a light leakage test. Get an image of the sun, then completely cover the front of the telescope with the front cap. Your images should go completely dark, but if they don't, you have light leaking in somewhere and you'll need to block it with electrical tape or cloth or something similar. If you have a narrow field of view where the sun completely fills the frame corner to corner, you can sometimes use a clearer plastic bag. A bag for this could show sharp details, but with a strong halo around bright objects when looking through it with your eye. Exposure times will be closer to normal. Narrow field imaging can of course also use more opaque material like our flat cap, which might be necessary anyway as we get close to solar maximum and have very high contrast active regions on the sun. 
Our flat cap is sold by inside diameter in millimeters. So measure the outside diameter of the frontmost component of your telescope and round up to the closest larger flat cap size. If you're using a Daystar ERF, that would be the frontmost metal cell part that holds the ERF glass. After you've captured your flat field, make sure to remove the flat cap and return your exposure timer gain back to normal. Now I'd like to demonstrate the whole process using sharp cap. I'm using a really tremendously bad cork reject here with an etalon worse than we would ever ship to a customer so that you can see what's possible in the worst case scenario. First we'll focus and find the center of the sun. Then we'll put our flat cap over the scope and adjust the exposure and gain. Then we go to the capture, capture flat menu item and pick, oh, say, 50 frames to average. Average about as many frames as you plan to include in a stack later. The software will capture the images, average them, and apply them to the live view. If it goes blank gray, that's a good sign. Let's remove the flat capper bag and tweak the exposure. Looks a whole bunch better already, doesn't it? To really pretty things up, I'm going to use Auto Stacker to select the sharpest 10% of frames. Then we'll go into Photoshop to colorize the image, resample it for the web, and use a little unsharp mask to give it some punch. Let's compare it back to that train wreck we started with. I think this shows how valuable a good flat field can be. To review the whole process, start by fixing any Newton's rings or light leaks, then pick one of the flat fielding techniques. In the case of our flat cap, start by centering the sun and focusing. Then install the flat cap and increase your exposure time by a factor of about 100 and fine tune it until the histogram is in the 80 to 90% neighborhood. Capture your flat field. Remember to take off the flat cap and return exposure times to normal and then enjoy your magazine quality solar images. If this video was helpful, please tell your friends.